Welcome out tonight. We're at the Potter's House Christian Church, and we are Chance Repeat. We're going to have an awesome night. And now uh, this first song we've got is called Feel It. chance repeat is because we believe in a God of chance after chance after chance. No matter, no matter how many times we stuff up, no matter how many times we get things wrong in life, we believe in a God that gives us another chance. So here's our next song called Beautiful Day.
next song alone. Here we go. church every week, uh, me and my sister, and we had to go whether we wanted to or not. My dad was the pastor, so that was part of the reason. And so we went along to church every week, and I grew up in uh, you know, Sunday school and doing all the church stuff, and my parents told me about God, they told me about Jesus, they told me about the Bible, and so I kind of grew up sort of believing that and knowing that that was real. Um, but to be honest, uh, you know, when, when I was a, around about 11, I put my hand up and I uh, answered an altar call and asked Jesus into my life and 
that was kind of just something I, I did because I knew that I should do that. But, uh, you know, as I, I was in high school at this stage, and so, you know, to be honest, the, the church thing every week didn't really do a whole lot for me. And I didn't really feel a whole lot of God or anything like that. And, and at the same time, all uh, my friends at school were uh, doing lots of things that Christians didn't do. And uh, to be honest, those temptations and the peer pressure and all that sort of stuff that my friends were doing was a lot more compelling than going to church and, and trying to be a Christian. And I really wanted, you know, something that was real, something that was exciting and really gripped me. And church just didn't do that. It was just nice. You know what I mean? Our older folks, they're all nice. And I was just looking for something exciting, you know. And so I started doing all the things that my friends were doing. I, so I started to smoke and drink and go to parties and... Uh, eventually I was smoking pot and just trying to get stoned and trying to just you know, have a good time basically and I was kind of having a good time I had some good times and I wasn't looking for God I wasn't looking to change my life and to be honest I was happy with my life um, and so but cut a long story short um, I went along to a church camp because some people talked me into going and I really just went along because uh, you know I liked the people and uh, I had no intention of changing, doing anything. But at that camp, we prayed a prayer and we asked Jesus Christ to come into our life. And I prayed that because I believed that and I thought I was a Christian. Um, and so I prayed that, not expecting anything. And what happened was that I had a real powerful encounter with God. That to this day, and, and, and this was uh, nearly 30 years ago, to this day I cannot deny the power of that encounter that Jesus Christ came into my heart and I experienced something that I'd never experienced before at the parties, the alcohol, the drugs, the friends, all those things that I was kind of searching for something. I found that when Jesus Christ came into my life and I, and, and, and I realized that this, I just felt this fulfillment and I felt this peace in my heart that I, I'd never found in doing all those things that my friends were doing. And so I really blew me away and to be honest God took me by surprise and so I made a decision then that I was going to live for Jesus Christ and my life completely changed and I stopped smoking, I stopped drinking, stopped swearing, became one of those boring Christian people that I thought was so boring but in my heart I had peace and I had satisfaction and I had joy in my heart that I'd never found and I can't say that in the 30 years since then that my life's just been a breeze, I've had, I've had trials, I've had difficulties, I've had struggles. But I want to say that Jesus Christ has always been there with me. He's helped me. He's changed me. He's given me the ability to be a different person. That's a daily decision. But Jesus has changed my life. And I want to tell you, if you're out there and maybe you've been to church and you think you kind of know about God and you've written it off, please don't write off Jesus. You need to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. Ask him into your heart. Ask him in. Repent of your sins and ask Jesus to forgive you. And I tell you, God will meet you and he will change your life because he has the power to do that. And that's really just what I wanted to say tonight, and I just thank you for listening. i 
called Let Me Pray, and it's about it talks about um, the church and how um, there's there's a spiritual dy- dynamic to what we what we're doing, what, why we're here, um, an actual relationship with Jesus Christ. It's about the spiritual aspect of life, and um, it talks about the power of prayer. And we've all um, anyone who's been a Christian has had some sort of experience um, with prayer. Um, and I know myself, like I've um, prayed for different things. I've prayed for like, my brother um, to get saved and he's actually gotten saved. And you can see things throughout your life um, that God answers prayer, whether it's subtle, whether it's huge. Um, and so it's just an encouragement. Like church, we need to pray because it works. So here we go. again and um, we don't have to feel defeated in Christ even though our circumstances can occasionally be dire sometimes they're great (laughs) but when they are dire um, we do have a hope in Jesus and regardless of what happens in this life we trust that he'll work things for good and whether that's here or whether that's in eternity we've got eternity in a perfect place forever with our saviour and yeah, we're going to experience that. We're going to be there one day. And this life here is going to feel like such a flash and such a vapour. Um, and it just helps us, I think, sometimes to just refocus on we're going to be forever in perfection and in glory. And we're really going to rise again with Jesus. And that's the future that we look towards for hope. And hope here as well, but ultimately hope in Jesus in heaven. Holy 
Can we pause now? We're going to invite Michelle all the way from South Africa. We're going to invite Michelle to show to us now. I'm so pleased he said I'm from South Africa, but actually now I'm from Australia. But so that you just get, I will speak slowly so you understand my accent. But thank you so much, everybody. Lovely to be here. I um, don't know if everybody remembers um, uh, Forrest Gump. Okay, so some of us remember him, but his mother always used to say to him, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. And so therein lies an indication of when you start life, you're pretty much in that position because it's kind of, I want to kind of touch on identity today. And um, so uh, your foundation is pretty important for, the, um, for your identity. So my, in my life, my, uh, my life was molded, my identity was molded by the words that were spoken over my life. And um, so they were quite harsh, and, but the one thing that really stood out for me was um, these words. Our problems only started when you and, uh, and my sibling were born. And so my interpretation of that uh, was, I have been denied the, uh, the right to exist. That was my interpretation. And so on that, as you journey forward, you kind of go, okay, well, that's a good, that must be my base. And that became my foundation. But I want to say I did come from a, a Christian family, the one that said, um, dropped us off at church. I had great parents. I just want to put it out there. I love my parents, you know, they, they're not here today, but I love them. And, um, but they, we, the, we, it was like seen and not heard kind of environment. Kids are seen and not heard. Uh, I was born in 1955, so work it out. Um, and so, and also they dropped off a church. And so that's the way it was. We kind of went on in life and you kind of pack it in. When I went, what I did know is when I was seven years old, I knew that Jesus loved me because there was a song that said, Jesus loves you, this I know, for the Bible tells you so. And I held on to that. I knew that at seven. At 16, God had... I had an encounter with God where he in part I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior when I was in boarding school. And I had, uh, God had it, uh, filled me with his Holy Spirit. I knew that. So I knew this was supernatural. But in getting in life, I became a leader, not a follower. Because what happened was I packed and I became self-preserved. So my foundation was still denied the right to exist. And I packed my life around me in self-preservation. I rose to the occasion. It's, it was almost like I, I can survive this thing. So it became a battle. So my, my persona and what I was presenting was this highly capable person. But deep down, I was filled with uh, fear, abandonment, rejection. Uh, it turned in later to bitterness, um, um, unforgiveness. I had problems in having uh, good relationships. I, that was an issue for me. I was always needy. I kind of, uh, but business-wise, I was, I was a go-getter. I was, I was seen as this great woman and blah, blah, blah. But the truth is, that was not who I was. I, was I going to church? Absolutely. I was going to church and I was a leader of leaders in church. Wasn't I just the girl? And I mean, there I was multiplying home cells, in those days it was called home cells, home groups and uh, multiplying them. And who was the girl? I was the girl. But inside, broken relationships, broken, not being able. And what was I doing? I was passing on the foundation that I had into my own family, into my own household, as was passed on to me. So what happened then, one day, um, the Lord pretty much had enough of me. And um, he said, I don't know you. And I said, but Lord, I, I'm doing this in your name. And I'm doing that. I, I'm doing, and he said, I do not know you. And the truth of the matter is, you see, I did know Jesus. But I had denied the power. It was a form of godliness I had. But I denied his power. And so everything that I was building on was not sustainable. Everything that my foundation was birthed in from a lie where, where, where Satan had said, you do not have the right to live. And, but at the same time, 
There are always people praying for you. My son and my daughter-in-law and my daughter Leanne were saved and they were praying for me. They knew that I was religious, but the reality is they prayed. And the day came when enough was enough of them. And they just said, mom, you need to get saved, you know? And I'm going, you know, I thought I was, but you know what, I look back today and I wasn't. And I can say today that there are many people that do sit in church and they, they're not necessarily going to heaven, you know, because it, this was a very, very dicey and very risky. I got radically saved on the 6th of May, 2010, and my life changed. And suddenly the thing that I was, the identity, where God had changed fear into faith. Abandonment gave me a family where there seemed no direction. I have a direction. He said, I have prepared a place for you in the midst of my, your enemy. And he said, the path that lies before you is the path of righteousness. And I, if I if in the last 10 years, in this, I, I um, am the, the church that one should be in is a, a God-fearing, uh, God-preaching, uh, Bible-preaching church where they, they you challenged. I was challenged. And um, I found my relationship with the Lord increasing and enlarging. And he gave me, he just kept giving me more. So I've had an adventurous life. But I want to tell you that nothing has touched the last 10 years that I've had. And every morning, and he's given me a song in my heart. So today, when I look back and I say, that uh, identity of you, you uh, denied the right to exist. Let me tell you, the Lord Jesus Christ said, I have shed my blood for you. I have risen and I am your identity. And I'm saying today that Christ is my identity. It's not, I, I do not operate, it's not fear, but it is overcoming because God has given us every gift available to us. And so today, I just want to just say, this is the best adventure I've ever had. And all the honor and glory goes to God. And I, I, and I, and I just thank those who continue to pray. And individuals who are, who are still praying for your loved ones who are not saved, continue to pray. And I just keep going. More. And I just want to thank my parents too for the foundation. They, people are hurting. You know, people hurt. And they just continue and transfer. I could see the transfer going on in my life as well. Just transferring the same hurt. On. But God said, no more. Because you're my child. And he just secured that. Thank you. Thanks for that awesome testimony, Michelle. We're going to go to a next song that's called Brothers.
it's called a provider and it's yeah pretty self-explanatory <laughs> sometimes life can be a bit much or we can just we just live life and sometimes it's great but um god is our provider he's jehovah jireh and we can depend on him um and we can trust him and i've done that myself and it's been good <laughs> it pays off and yeah that's what this song's about Thanks for coming out to the concert. Uh, that is that is the end of the concert. But if you just want to stick around for a few minutes, I just want to say a few things. And um, so yeah, this is a this is a church for those of you that um, maybe not were aware watching the live stream. We are a church, and we do we are a Bible believing church. And so, um, if we could just have every head bowed and every eye closed in this place, and we're just going to talk for a few moments about who God is the message of tonight. Now, a lot of people in the building here, I'm not sure about on the live stream, but a lot of you are Christians and you, you understand what we're about. You understand everything that's going on. You understand maybe the message throughout the songs. You understand the message of the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross. You understand all those things in theory. Maybe you believe it. Maybe... Maybe that's something that something that you have in your mind. Maybe not necessarily something that you have in your heart. Maybe this is the part right now where you're not really listening. You've kind of tuned out a bit. Because you understand. You know all this. You know what, what's going to be said. You know the general gist of who we are, of what we do. But I want to just ask you, just, just this one time, just... Open your ears one more time to the gospel, to what God wants to speak to you right now in this moment when you're alone with your thoughts, when you're alone with God. 
Some of you might have heard of the Romans Road before. Parts of the Bible where it basically goes through the fact that we're all sinners and that we all need God. And that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of Christ is the gift of God is Christ Jesus our Lord. And eternal life. Another part of the Romans Road is basically it outlines that the way that we believe is in our heart. That with our heart we can believe all of these things. But with our mouth we confess. And it's through that confession, through that verbal repentance, that audible repentance where we speak words. Words of repentance, words of asking God's forgiveness. It's through speaking those words that we are forgiven. It's got to be more than just something that you have in your heart. Yes, you believe with your heart. And that's very important that you believe in Jesus, that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that He did rise from the dead three days after, three days later. But it's very important that you confess your repentance, that you confess your sins and ask for forgiveness. And it's through confession that we have salvation, through confession that we're saved. Maybe tonight, I know everyone in the building, maybe tonight you've prayed a prayer once and never really felt anything. Maybe you're a church kid, maybe you've never been to church as a a child. Whoever you are, whatever your story is, whatever your advantages or disadvantages in life, I want to ask you one more time, seriously, if you have that relationship with Jesus, if you can feel God on your heart right now, just raise your hand or have someone pray with you. You know the deal. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's a celebration. We're all happy for you. We're absolutely stoked that you would have your heart right with Jesus. And that is way more important than holding up an image, than maintaining some kind of personality. Have your heart right with Jesus tonight. Because you never know when it's going to be too late. I heard a story of a guy who left church. He never really felt much about God, never really felt the Holy Spirit, didn't really know what people were on about. So he left church and he's done his own thing. But down the track, things were happening in life in his workplace and he started pondering and questioning these things of life. Why do I hate this person? Why don't I get along with this other person? Why not this? Why not that? What are these things that I'm thinking? Why don't I have what these people have? And God spoke to him. He said, it's because you don't have forgiveness. You don't know what forgiveness is. Maybe that's you tonight. Maybe you don't know what forgiveness is. But you can know. You can have that supernatural, all-powerful relationship with God. That experience that puts every other good experience in your life to shame. You can have that. That experience that everyone's talking about but you don't quite understand. You can have that. That forgiveness. That feeling of complete, pure forgiveness. You can have that. All it takes is to simply pray. You know the deal. Just raise your hand right now. We'll have someone pray with you. This person that was questioning all those things and God spoke to him. He's saved now because he made some good decisions. Something else that God spoke to him was that very soon it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. There will be a point in time where it's too late. Don't cross that line. You're here tonight and you feel that sense of 
man, it's going to be too late. When am I going to get my heart right? When am I going to give up all of these shenanigans, these stupid things that I'm doing? When am I going to give that up? Oh, maybe tomorrow. Maybe, maybe when the time's right. Well, the time is right now. The time is right now. Don't delay. Because tomorrow it may be too late. Like concrete being poured. Comes a time where it sets. And it doesn't move. Don't let that be your relationship with God. Where you've hardened your heart. And it's set. And it won't move. Don't let that be your relationship with God. One more time, friend. Raise your hand and have someone pray with you. If you're on the live stream and you want to pray, pray. Just repeat after me. Father God, I know that I'm a sinner. I ask for your forgiveness. And I repent of my sins. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And that he rose from the dead. I receive forgiveness and new life. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for me. Amen. If you're on the live stream, there'll be a number at the end. You can contact that number or visit our website get in touch with the church, we want to help you. Amen. If you're here tonight, you can look up at me. Thanks for supporting the uh, the band. We're just going to play one more song, and uh, it's called Lion and the Lamb. It's a worship song. We just want to worship God for all that He's done, and uh, and pray for those people that, uh, that did come out tonight. Amen. This song is called Lion and the Lamb.
Thanks for coming out tonight. We appreciate the support from the church. If you're online, make sure if you prayed that prayer, get in contact with the church. We want to help you. It's not about signing up to this church specifically, but we just want to help you have that relationship with Jesus Christ. And so feel free to contact us. Uh, go to our website, which uh, will be in the description down below. And so uh, thanks for coming along. Thanks for checking us out. Again, we're Chance Repeat from the Potter's House Christian Church. Uh, we're going to have more concerts coming up, so stay tuned. We've also got services Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. Sunday night, and then Wednesday night at 7 p.m. So if you're online and you want to come and check out the church, see who we are, by all means, rock up to any one of those services. All are welcome. Uh, so thanks guys for tuning in, and we're just going to ask. We're just going to close it off, and I'll ask Stuart to close off in prayer. Father God, I do thank you, God, for what you're doing in this church, God, and in this city, God, I pray. God, that you would be with us as we go and help us return safely tomorrow morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Have a good night.